Crimea is of key importance. If the conditions for peace between Ukraine and Russia are to be discussed, this personal opinion was expressed by Polish Foreign Minister Radoslaw Sikorski at a nightcap discussion at the 20th annual YES meeting in Kyiv recently organized by the Viktor Pinchuk Foundation. Crimea is symbolically important for Russia and particularly for Putin, but strategically crucial for Ukraine. So I don't see how they can reach a deal without Crimea being demilitarized, Sikorsky said. He believes that if both countries want it, a solution could be found here. We could put it under a UN mandate with a mission to prepare a fair referendum after having verified who are the rightful inhabitants and all that, and we could kick it down the road by 20 years. Sikorsky suggested one of the options. The Polish minister also expressed the opinion that it was a big mistake for the West, including the Americans, to tell the Ukrainians not to fight in Crimea. If the Ukrainians fought in Crimea, even symbolically, he might not have dared to do Donbass, Sikorsky said. Somewhat earlier, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Sirsky, stated that it is entirely possible to return Crimea occupied by Russia. Of course, this is a big military secret. We will do everything possible to reach the internationally recognized borders of 1991. We must win to free our citizens who are in the occupied territories who are suffering. Crimea will be returned to Ukraine. This is already happening in full swing. The Russian occupation contingent in Crimea is gradually but surely becoming doomed to complete isolation. And after isolation, liberation will follow. Military and political observer Alexander Kovalenko is sure Ukraine's allies share this position. For example, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan recently emphasized that Russia must return control of the Crimean Peninsula to Ukraine. The Crimea issue remains crucial for Russia as its 2014 illegal annexation marked the beginning of its open aggression against Ukraine. Thousands of firefighters continued their efforts to extinguish over 100 wildfires in northern Portugal on Wednesday. Seven people have died since the worst spate of fires in recent years spread out of control over the weekend. Portuguese Prime Minister Luís Montenegro declared a state of calamity for the hardest-hit areas late on Tuesday, invoking powers to mobilize more firefighters and civil servants. He also called on police investigators to redouble their efforts to find those who started the fires and pledged help for those who have lost their homes or have been evacuated. The European Copernicus Satellite Service said that over 15,000 hectares had been scorched and a combined 13 kilometers of fire fronts had been detected as on Tuesday night. It added that an area home to 210,000 people was exposed to the fire risk. The hot, dry conditions behind the outbreaks in Portugal coincided this week with flooding in Central Europe. Spain's military sent 240 soldiers and vehicles from its emergency response battalion specialized in combating fires to its neighbor. For water dumping planes from France, two from Spain and two from Italy were deployed after answering an appeal to help their fellow EU member. Morocco likewise responded to a request by Portugal with two water dumping planes that arrived on Wednesday. Three firefighters died in their vehicle on Tuesday, while another had succumbed to what authorities called a sudden illness while on duty over the weekend. Three civilians have also perished, according to civil protection authorities. Experts link the fires to both climate change and the abandonment of traditional farming and forestry professions that helped keep rural areas clear of underbrush that is now fuel for fires.